Good morning everybody and welcome to our time of morning prayer. What a day yesterday was, how warm and how hot. I hope you had a great day and enjoyed yourself. I hope you feel ready for this day. And to help us along we, uh, we start the day by worshipping God, by focusing our attention and our lives onto His Word and what He calls us to do. So let's just take a moment to be still before we start this morning prayer. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O oh God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 42 As the deer longs for the water brooks, so longs my soul for you, O God. My soul is a first for God, even for the living God. When shall I come before the presence of God? My tears have been my bread day and night, while all day long they say to me, Where is now your God? Now when I think on these things, I pour out my soul, how I went with the multitude and led the procession to the house of God. With the voice of praise and thanksgiving, among those who kept holy days. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? O oh, put your trust in God, for I will yet give him thanks, who is the help of my countenance and my God. My soul is heavy within me, therefore I will remember you from the land of Jordan, and from Hermon, and the hill of Mizar. Deep calls to deep in the thunder of your waterfalls, all your breakers and waves have gone over me. The Lord will grant his loving kindness in the daytime. Through the night his song will be with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God my rock. Why have you forgotten me? And why go I so heavily while the enemy oppresses me? As they crush my bones, my enemies mock me, while all day long they say to me, Where is now your God? Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? O oh, put your trust in God, for I will yet give him thanks who is the help of my countenance and my God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Come, Creator Spirit, source of life, sustain us when our hearts are heavy and our wells have run dry. For you are the Father's gift with him who is our living water, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Old Testament reading is continuing uh, from the book of 1 Samuel, uh, and we've got David and Saul. When Saul saw David going, to, going out to meet the Philistine, he said to Abner, commander of the army, tell me about this young man's family. Abner said, for the life of me, O oh king, I don't know. The king said, well, find out the lineage of, the, of this raw youth. As soon as David came back from killing the Philistine, Abner brought him, the Philistine's head still in his hand, straight to Saul. Saul asked him, young man, whose son are you? I'm the son of your servant Jesse, said David, the one who lives in Bethlehem. By the time David had finished reporting to Saul, Jonathan was deeply impressed with David. An immediate bond was forged between them. He became totally committed to David. From that point on, he would be David's number one advocate and friend. Saul received David into his own household that day, no more to return to the home of his father. Jonathan, out of his deep love for David, 
made a covenant with him. He formalised it with the solemn gifts, his own royal robe and weapons, armour, sword, bow and belt. Whatever Saul gave David to do, he did it, and did it well. So well that Saul put him in charge of his military operations. Everybody, both the people in general and Saul's servants, approved and admired David's leadership. As they returned home, after David had killed the Philistine, the women poured out of all the villages of the Israel, singing and dancing, welcoming King Saul with tambourines, festive songs and lutes. In playful frolic, the women sang, Saul kills by the thousand, David by the ten thousand. This made Saul angry, very angry. He took it as a personal insult. He said, they credit David with ten thousands and me with only thousands. Before you knew it, they'll be giving him the kingdom. From that moment on, Saul kept his eye on David. The next day, an ugly mood was sent by God to afflict Saul. He became quite beside himself, raving. David played his harp, as he usually did at such times. Saul had a spear in his hand. And suddenly, Saul threw the spear, thinking, I'll nail David to the wall. David ducked, and the spear missed. This happened twice. Now Saul feared David. It was clear that God was with David and had left Saul. So Saul got David out of his sight by making him an officer in the army. David was in combat frequently. Everything David did turned out well. Yes, God was with him. As Saul saw David becoming more successful, he himself grew more fearful. He could see the handwriting on the wall. But everyone else in Israel and Judah loved David. They loved watching him in action. The kingdom of God is justice and peace. The kingdom of God is justice and peace. And joy in the Holy Spirit. Come, Lord, and open in us the gates of your kingdom. Luke 24 While the disciples were saying all this, Jesus appeared to them and said, Peace be with you. They thought they were seeing a ghost and were scared half to death. He continued with them, Don't be upset and don't let all those doubting questions take over. Look at my hands. Look at my feet. It's really me. Touch me. Look me over from head to toe. A ghost doesn't have muscle and bone like this. As he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. They still couldn't believe what they were seeing. It was too much. It seemed too good to be true. He asked, Do you have any food here? They gave him a piece of leftover fish they had cooked. He took it and ate it right before their eyes. Then he said, everything I told you while I was with you comes to this. All the things written about me in the law of Moses, in the prophets and in the Psalms have to be fulfilled. He went on to open their understandings of the word of God, showing them how to read their Bibles this way. He said, you can see now how it is written that the Messiah suffers, raises from the dead on the third day, and then a total life changing through the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed in his name to all nations, starting from here, from Jerusalem. You're the first to hear and see it. You're the witnesses. What comes next is very important. I'm sending what my father promised to you. So stay here in the city until he arrives until you're equipped with the power from on high. He then led them out of the city over to Bethany. Raising his hands, he blessed them, and while blessing them, took his leave, being carried up to heaven. As they were on their knees worshipping him, they returned to Jerusalem, bursting with joy. They spent all their time in the temple praising God. Yes.
glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth Lord God Heavenly King Almighty God and Father we worship you we give you thanks we praise you for your glory Lord Jesus Christ only Son of the Father Lord God Lamb of God you take away the sin of the world have mercy on us you are seated at the right hand of the Father receive our prayer for you alone are the Holy One you alone are the Lord you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you that we have an opportunity this day to show your love to all around us, to be witnesses to your grace your love and your kindness to act out and be your hands and feet in this world Lord I pray that you inspire us this day open our eyes and our hearts to everything around us that needs dealing with and Lord help us do it through your strength and not our own Lord in your mercy hear our prayer Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the retired clergy and we lift them to you. Thank you for their years of dedicated service, for their preaching of your word, for intercessing on behalf of us as a people to you, Lord. We pray that they are rested, that they enjoy retirement, that they continue to be beacons of your love in this world. Lord, lift them, refresh them, renew them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we continue to pray for the COVID situation, the lockdown, the restrictions. And we especially lift up nursing homes and hospices. The staff who are working there. Lord, we pray for renewal, for energy. Pray for all those people who live there, who don't get a chance to leave, who may feel full of anxiety because of this place, because of this time. Pray for your peace in these places, Lord, to descend on them, Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, whose servant Dominic grew in the knowledge of your truth and formed an order of preachers to proclaim the faith of Christ, by your grace, give to all your people a love for your word and a longing to share the gospel so that the whole world may come to know you and your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen looking for the coming of his kingdom as our saviour taught us so with longing we pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, I pray that you have a blessed day. Enjoy the sunshine um, and shine God's love in this world. God bless. Take care.